We've just seen that we can derive the no goods from completion formulas more or less in a direct way just via a couple of logical translations. Actually, the same can now be done with loop formulas. Before defining the actual loop no goods, let me first recall a few concepts from the axiomatic characterization of stable models in terms of completion and loop formulas, notably the concept such as a loop and a loop formula. Actually, in this characterization, uh, we may actually form the loop formulas from all subsets of the atoms occurring in the program. This is, of course, uh, a bit overkill, right? But in principle, this is equivalent to restricting our attention to sets of atoms that induce strongly connected subgraphs in the dependency graph. And we will actually do the same thing here. We will just look at arbitrary subsets of, of the atoms and not necessarily uh, the ones that, for, that induce uh, st strongly connected subgraphs. Of course, in an implementation, this is what you do because then you can concentrate your attention on the delicate parts in the, in the graph. Okay, number two, uh, I actually believe that what is much more important than loops and loop formulas is this notion of an external support, right? So whenever you have an atom or a set of atoms, um, they are good, right? Provided there is an external support for these guys. Because once there is no external support, then you risk to have circular derivations in the air. And accordingly, these are also the key concepts we look at now. Yeah, so as mentioned, we look at an arbitrary subset of the set of atoms, and I may call this subset a loop nonetheless, just for intuitive means, right? But in formally, we just use an arbitrary subset here. Anyway, such a loop uh, may or may not have external supports, and these are rules whose head actually belongs to the loop, but whose positive body literals are disjoint from the loop. So in this way, they're really they more or less, they allow you us to derive atoms in the loop, but the, the application or the production of this atom is external to the loop. Okay, so that's the first key concept. And of course, once we have these guys, we can form the second key concept, which are of course the loop formulas. And here I actually made our loop or our subset of the atoms explicit, just to make this a bit more concrete. So the loop formula of a set of atoms is an implication, and again, we have seen that already in the axiomatic characterization, which says that, well, if one of the atoms in the set, in the loop, uh, becomes true, then there must also exist an external support. That is, there must exist at least one, and the at least one is the disjunction here, um, rule that has one of these atoms in the loop in the head, and wh whose body applies, whose body is, has been found to be true. And so formally this means, keep in mind, this is here, here the body of such an external support rule. And we, tra we then take this set and we form a conjunction. This is the body formula of, of, the bo of, 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 of the body, right? This is the conjunction of the positive and the negative body literals. And if one of these guys is true, then we have an external support. Okay, so keep in mind that in our characterization of the no goods, we actually rely on... Um, variables abbreviating the body. So let's actually reformulate this here in terms of bodies. So keep in mind that we can simply turn the external support into the external bodies by accumulating the bodies of the rules of actually not, not arbitrary rules but the bodies of the external support and this is the same definition here. And then here we simply replace we, uh, the external support by the external body and directly form uh, the body formulas from these guys. Okay, so this is just some rewriting but it it, it, it's, it's a bit more handy to, ha to talk about the bodies than about the rules. Okay, and then we can just go ahead, take this implication here and translate it just as we've seen in the subsection before on the no goods from the completion formula. This is equivalent to the conjunction of these disjunctions here. And what do they say? They say, well, um, if an atom, either an atom in the loop is false or an external support is true. And this for all the atoms in the in the loop. And again, this may be a characterization that perhaps doesn't say much, at least to me, and to be honest, intuitively, it doesn't say much. But once we do this trick with applying the De Morgan laws, uh, I think then things really jump to the eye. So what do they say now? It says that it cannot be the case that an atom uh, belonging to the loop is true, but none of the external bodies has been found to be true. That is, no external support exists. Right? And this for all the atoms in the loop. 
And now actually there's one little detail actually where, where, where it actually pays off that we have auxiliary atoms for the bodies because look, here we would negate the conjunction of the positive and negative body literals. And of course this would be quite cumbersome to handle, but keep in mind we have auxiliary atoms for the body, so we can just plug in here at this spot here this auxiliary atom that stands for the actual body. Okay, let's do this next. Just as with the completion no goods, we can directly turn the formulas obtained on the last slide into loop no goods. So the idea is we take a set of atoms U and all the external supports or the external bodies to be precise for this set and then we can form a loop no good for each of the members of the set. So here it is. So and what does it say? It says well it cannot be the case that the atom is true but all external supports are denied. That is the corresponding bodies have been found out to be false. And that's it. Now if we take all these guys together we get the loop no goods of the entire program and again we are we are very gentle here so we take arbitrary all arbitrary subsets non-empty subsets right and we accumulate the corresponding um, loop no goods and of course the purpose of, of these guys just as with loop formulas is to deny cyclic derivations among true atoms that's the purpose of course of these guys keep in mind actually that whenever we are a bit more generous in defining what a loop is and actually as we are here we don't even need uh, the completion because these guys somehow subsume that but that's perhaps another topic and a bit food for thought okay let's look at an example here's just a small example and let us consider the subset of atoms with u and v inside well, this shouldn't come as a surprise because U and V actually is a real loop because it induces a strongly connected subgraph. You see here more or less the self-dependency between U and V. Anyway, if we look at the set U and V or the loop U and V, this set has one external support and this is this rule here. So whenever somehow uh, this rule applies, then the loop has an external support and we may derive elements on it. Okay, let's add, then look at the loop formulas that we get. So for U, uh, we get this loop formula here, which says that, well, it can't be the case that U is true, but the only external support of the, of the loop is false. And in the same way for the second member of, the, of our set U and V, that is V, it says that, well, it can't be the case that V is true, but the only external support of, of, the, of the loop of the set has been found out to be false. And these are the two uh, no goods we get for this loop. And again, since we may restrict ourselves actually to only to the, to the real loops, these are the only loop formulas we have to consider on this small example. Uh, but let's actually see what we get now that we have completion no goods and loop no goods. So here's the grand finale, which may not come so much as a surprise. After all, we derived our no goods from the axiomatic characterization and just as in the axiomatic characterization, we also can characterize stable models in terms of completion and loop no goods. So then the theorem just says that, well, whenever we have a stable model, this corresponds to a unique solution of uh, the no goods. And if, if I say it corresponds, it means uh, the set of atoms of the stable model corresponds to the true atom in this uh, solution. Okay, so now, now this actually more or less gives us now uh, a true characterization of stable models in terms of no goods. A few words perhaps to, to, to remember. So first of all, the no goods, the loop no goods actually, and you may have seen that I switched notation from L to U on, on the two previous slides. Uh, they actually augment the completion no goods with conditions that check for unfounded sets, right? Keep in mind also the blue board no goods where I, I, I really stressed a little bit that there is this support on, on, on the sets in the, in, the, in the unfounded sets. And this I think is nicely mirrored by these loop no goods. Okay, then second, size matters, right? So while actually the completion no goods are linear uh, in the program in terms of the atoms and the, and the rules, the loop no goods may contain exponentially many non-redundant uh, loop no goods, right? 
Uh, and this is, of course, something where we have to pay attention. And this is something where we actually pay attention in the algorithms. So the idea roughly is that given a logic program, we compile it into the completion no goods, but the loop for the loop no goods, we are lazy. So we more or less have a dedicated algorithm with it, which is called an unfounded set checker, and it checks for unfounded sets. And only if it finds one, it then spits out the corresponding loop no good and adds it lazily to the logic program. Okay, this was already a sneak preview on the next session. So if you're interested, bear with me.